What methods are you using within your water utility to tackle your non-revenue water issues? District metered areas, or DMAs, have been used in Europe for quite some time and have been found to be very effective in honing in on the problem areas within your water system. In this video, we're going to discuss the concept of DMAs as well as point out some of the tools available in today's AMI systems to simplify the data gathering process as well as being able to provide some proactive monitoring of your DMAs. Let's dive into it. Welcome to the Smart Water Show brought to you by Badger Meter. I'm your host, Maurice Blackwell, and this is the show where we discuss your everyday water utility problems and find the most effective technology solutions for you. Stay tuned for our question of the day at the end of this video to enter our weekly giveaway. Let's first break down the concept of DMAs. A DMA is a discrete area of your water distribution system which is permanently or temporarily hydraulically separated from the rest of the system. The goal is to understand the total volume of inflow into this area and compare it against the metered usage for that same area. When you do this comparison, ideally these two numbers are the same, meaning you don't have any leakage in that area, but that rarely ever happens. The other variable that you have to consider when setting up a DMA is the accuracy of your meters. If I'm doing the comparison of the inflow to the metered usage and my meters have a large amount of inaccuracy, then my calculations are going to be skewed and I could be chasing a false positive. At the end of the day, the goal of setting up the DMA is to allow you to better focus your leak detection efforts in the areas that need it the most. Let's walk through an example. Say the image on the screen represents a part of your service territory where you want to set up district metered areas. The components that go into the DMA are the following. In blue, you're going to see your water mains represented that flow through this service territory. In order to establish a DMA, you're going to have to have valves that actually isolate these particular areas. Now, you may have valves installed currently that you can use, or you may need to install some boundary valves in order to establish our DMAs. You're also going to install master meters that go into the inflow of these particular areas. Those master meters are going to be the comparison that you're going to compare against the metered usage area for that particular DMA. Represent on the screen, I'm going to show you the different DMAs that we're going to set up and they're going to be represented by this gray area with this red border. The size of DMAs can vary greatly from utility to utility. Ideally, those sizes are somewhere between 500 and 2500 accounts. However, there are a lot of utilities that use DMAs that are quite larger because it still allows them to focus on a particular area, especially if you have a densely populated area. In our example, we're also going to show all of these particular properties or accounts that actually have a water meter and an AMI endpoint that actually sends that data back proactively. Let's say this particular area is the area that we want to establish our first DMA. What we're going to do is we're actually going to find out how we can install a master meter and then how we can boundary this all. So what we can do in our example is we can add in these two boundary valves. You'll see one in the lower left hand corner and one towards the top. Again, the master meter is going to measure all of the inflow of water going into this area here. And then I'm going to be able to compare that against all the information that's being sent back from the AMI endpoints. If I look at my whole system now, you'll see that I've done this even below where I've put in particular boundary valves and I've added in master meters as well. So now what I've done is I've actually created four distinct DMA areas here. Again, these sizes could vary. These could represent 500 accounts or they could represent 5,000 accounts, but I've been able to hone in on these areas and now I can do that comparison. Let's say within a week's time in one of these particular areas, I'm able to measure with a master meter 1 million gallons. The aggregate of homes here, let's say there's 500 homes there, 500 accounts. Let's say they measure 900,000 gallons. Well, there again, going back to our earlier conversation, I understand that 
I'm losing 100,000 gallons either through inaccuracy of meters or leaks in my system. If I were to do that same comparison across these four particular areas, whichever one of these areas has the largest discrepancy between master meter reading and the aggregate of meters here, that's where I'm going to focus and concentrate my leak detection efforts. Well, let's take a look at how your AMI Fix network can help with the management of your DMAs. This particular graph represents the data that's being sent back through your AMI Fix network. The analytical based software that goes with most AMI Fix network can allow you to set up your master meters, which in this case is your supply meter. And then it can also allow you to establish your demand meters, which are the meters that are in each DMA area. In this graph, you'll see that ideally these two lines should really be right on top of one another, representing a low amount of leakage. You'll notice on the fifth of this month, there was a small discrepancy between the supply meter, your master meter, and the aggregate of homes. At this point, someone should have been sent out to investigate what was going on in this particular area. But what happened was, is this utility allowed this to continue to fester. And right around the 24th of the month, you'll see that there's a very large disparity between these two. And then probably around the 25th or 26th, there was a catastrophic water main break that could have been eliminated had someone investigated this. Again, this is just one way that your AMI network can help you proactively monitor your district metered areas. Lastly, let's take a look at a real world example of DMAs in action by reviewing a case study of Highway 71 Water District Number 1 in Alma, Arkansas. The water utility services approximately 2,500 water customers scattered across 175 miles of distribution line throughout the Arkansas countryside. Working in conjunction with their local distributor, Henry Utility Products, the water utility manager, Jesse McChristian Jr. said that because their system encompasses such a large land mass, they decided to implement a DMA solution utilizing a sailor-based AMI. They broke their system down into 10 zones, which allowed them to determine where the leaks were coming from. When they combined the data monitoring capabilities of their sailor-based AMI, with the very well-defined DMA strategy that they had set up, they are able to identify numerous leaks throughout their system, equaling approximately 125 gallons of water per minute. The system allowed them to save $260,000 a year in non-revenue water that before they were purchasing from their supplier. Just another great example of finding the most effective technology solution to solve your everyday water utility problem. If you have any questions about DMAs, feel free to ask a question in the comment section below, and I will personally provide you with an answer. Or if you'd rather send a private message or have a question related to metering or meter reading systems that I can help you with, be sure to connect with me on LinkedIn. Our question of the day. Are you using DMAs to assist you with your non-revenue water efforts? A simple yes or no will do please provide your reply in the comment section below. Be one of the first 10 people to reply to be entered into our weekly Smart Water Show giveaway. If you found value in this content, be sure to click the like button. And if you have a colleague that would benefit from listening to this episode on district metered areas, be sure to share it with them by clicking the share button. We'd like to thank you for watching this video and we'll catch you next time on the Smart Water Show.